So pollutants from combustion, they're a major issue for combustion systems. This is the big crux of why people don't like combustion, because there's lots and lots of pollutants. Um, the only reason we held on to combustion as a system is because it's really, really good at what it does, giving us really fast energy and a lot of it. Okay? So that's something that we're still coming to terms with. Now we rely heavily on combustion, so managing pollutants is important for us. Okay? Carbon tax, things of that nature, are all ways to sort of help us deal with this pollution problem. And they can come as a result of the reaction itself. So combustion will always give you CO2. That's just, a, just something that we have to live with. Combustion will produce CO2. But, it can also, but pollutants can also come as a byproduct of the process. So in this case, nitrous oxides. So because there's nitrogen in the air, the heat from the reaction has actually caused nitrous oxides to form, where otherwise we may not have had them. So it's just a byproduct of this combustion. Or they can come as because of impurities in the fuel. So we have a fuel, it's not perfect. It's not this amazingly pure chemical. There will be impurities in it, so we can get sulfur oxides out as well because there's some sulfur impurities in some fuels, and so that can come as a pollutant as well. So the major pollutants from combustion are carbon monoxide, which we spoke about in the incomplete combustion segment, carbon dioxide, which we're all familiar with, carbon as a particulate, or um, C, NOx, which is nitrous oxides, and SOx, which are sulfur oxides. Um, sometimes these are called NOx and SOx, because that's how they're spelled. Simple as that. Ideally, there would be a way to minimize all of these chemicals. That's the would be the, you know, the most beautiful thing that we could figure out right now is the way to minimize all of them simultaneously. However, the, of course, there's always a catch-22. If you minimize one pollutant in many combustion situations, you could end up increasing another. So let's say I want to reduce NOx, I could increase CO and C just by the way that these combustion systems work. Okay? And lots and lots of research is going into how to minimize all of these at once, and it's really, really difficult because they're all kind of competing with one another. So let's talk about incomplete combustion products. We spoke about this sort of briefly in the last lesson, but we'll talk about it in more depth this time. So complete combustion, the products are CO2 and H2O. We just spoke about that in the last lesson. And when there's not enough oxygen to reach complete combustion, we get CO and C. Okay? And that's a pretty familiar site as well. Big truck, just starting up. And you can see a plume of black smoke come out as, he, as the driver hits on the accelerator. Um, and that's this guy here, C. And it's not very good for you to breathe in. So CO2, uh, CO is a toxic gas that is fatal in fairly low concentrations. And we spoke about why in the last lesson. It bonds to hemoglobin. And C is a solid, particular emission of carbon that has been linked with cancer due to its high surface area. So the carbon particulate is actually very carcinogenic because it can interact with our DNA because of this high surface area. Okay, so it, it interacts with our DNA and causes cancers to occur, and that's due to its high surface area. In a petrol engine, these emissions are quite low because the mixture is really well mixed. Um, when you have a sort of a combustion system in a petrol engine, you've got like a cylinder and you spray some fuel in there, and then the piston comes up, and a spark occurs, and then it, it burns. Now, the fuel is at stoichiometric um, conditions, so it's basically enough to be completely, com uh, completely burned. So that's why petrol engines don't suffer from much of these CO and C emissions. But a catalytic co converter, which is a platinum catalyst, is added in, the, in all petrol cars in, near the tailpipe, to reduce these emissions anyway, just to be safe, because we don't want to have this problem, so we might as well just deal with it. Now in a diesel car, so a diesel engine, these, en these emissions are quite high, because it's a little bit different the way a diesel engine works. Um, however, there's really little that can actually be done, um, about CO particularly. But in terms of particulates, um, we can put a filter in the tailpipe to really catch all that um, all those part particles coming out, and then we can burn them off um, later on. 
So we can deal with the particulates, but we're not so good at dealing with the, with the CO in this case. In a diesel engine, in a petrol engine, it's fine.